welcome back. It's Christina again with the Artist Pod, and today we'll be talking about how to draw a cat. Um, this is to prepare it to become a feline familiar, so next week we'll be drawing the witch's hat. Both of them are already sort of sketched, so it's just a matter of drawing it in. As always, I'm using Wacom Intos Pro Tablet, and I'm drawing straight into Photoshop. So, let's get arting. All right, so um, here's our little feline familiar. Um, if, you know, usually when I'm drawing like a or thinking of like a feline familiar, I'm thinking of a black cat, and um, I do struggle drawing black on black, but I think what I'm going to do is purple uh, for the hat as well. Purple can kind of, in the right circumstances, done the right way, purple can kind of act as a, as a black um, instead of actual black so that I can still draw it fully saturated without having to worry about, you know, the fact I'm drawing on a black background. But I am, I have decided after some like back and forth thought, I'm going to make this a tuxedo cat. So um, tuxedo cat just means it has some white, um, typically kind of coming up a little bit and then going down on the, on the cheeks and then the chin. So um, that obviously will be easy because that's white. So I'm going to get started with that. Um, and I'm just kind of playing that part by ear, but I am being mindful of the fact I gave it, since it's a little bit more cartoony, some scrunched up, you know, face bits. I don't know that that's the right word. <laughs> right there. Right. So uh, Tuxedo Cat, it's only going to like come up a little bit, so I'm not going to have it come up too far. Um, and then have it, right, I need to mimic how far out this comes to the other side, since that's obviously not even. Um, I have this come straight out, and then we'll have it coming all the way kind of in here. But we're not going to go all the way like up with it, right? So I'm going to go a little bit over and then sort of cut that short. We'll do the rest of that in purple. And they can be different. We can go a little bit further on one side. That, typically with tuxedo cats, it's not identical on both sides. So that's really the question is what side do I want what to be? So we'll have this one actually come up all the way. And then we'll have the other side only be a partial. Um, right, so this side. You come in the middle, you kind of aim in. And then we'll do just like a little bit so I'm certainly filling up you know towards the edge of the cheek but not coming all the way over or all the way up I should say that's probably good and maybe like a little extra bump and then down on the chin So nice and easy on the white. That should also help the purple. So the reason I decided to do that is by having some white in place. Also debating on if I should make this thicker. Potentially on both sides. Yeah. And we'll have that cut in. Right, since I didn't sketch that part out, it really is just kind of playing that by ear. Okay. And then we'll get to that purple, which I've already sort of drawn here. And that'll fill in the rest. Right, so. Which, you know, I specifically sketch things in purple because rarely is an animal that color, and here I am drawing in purple. Go me. Way to break my own rules. All right, so we'll bring that up and over. Right, I typically will draw an aim at the eye, so I'm coming off the nose. Um, mindful that, you know, it's a little cartoony, so I'm going to try to add in some of these cartoon elements of like wrinkles and other things. 
like that grin, you have that little spot that I've drawn in. It'll uh, can create a crease to create the grin. And maybe have a, a few spots sticking out on the hair. Right, but even here you can kind of get the sense that this purple, at least the way it currently is, who knows once I add highlights and shadows, um, is uh, showing up as, as almost mimicking a black. Like, you know, it's not a color the animal is, and so therefore our brains kind of fill in some information. And of course we have a little bit of the eyebrow we can see through the hat. and then around. And I can change how the white is if I, you know, if I really want to. Right, so here aiming at the eye, also being mindful that I have some um, wrinkles here too, and then swooping the lines up and I do have the eyelid there as well. Swooping the lines up and over the eye, being careful around the eye. I know I often say that, but it's always true. And then as we swoop under the eye, the lines will come straight down off of it. At an angle off of it, which is almost like straight down, but not. The thing that is exactly like the thing, except not at all like the thing that I just said. Right, and just pulling that over to the edge. So I'm going to finish out this purple, the sketch, and I'll be right back. All right, so um, now that we've sketched it in, we're going to um, go ahead and fill it in. So a few things to note, right, like the hat is probably casting a shadow. I'm going to have the light source coming from above and to the left, so that'll give the best chance to like illuminate the cat's face. Um, and then, you know, of course, anything like on this far side is going to be in shadow, so that's very light pin pressure. But also keeping in mind that I am going to do a little grin. So to have the little like laugh lines in place, I'm going to put that as very light pin pressure. And then all edges are in shadow, well, because the light source is coming from above and to the right, which is above and in front of, not behind or next to. So that means that um, even the side closest to the light source is in shadow, but only like on the edge, right? So that's just that light pin pressure. And then um, we have the uh, hat to worry about and exactly how that is going to play out. I'm going to have this a little longer right at the cheek. It's a little bit more cartoony, so we can do some things that wouldn't typically be done. Right, and then adding some shadows by the eyes, adding some shadows here as well, and here where the face was coming over. Okay, so then back side of the ear would be in shadow. And then, sorry, let me just press that a little bit into the hat, right? Then you have the hat cutting forward. Um, because you have the back side of the ear, you're going to have some of this in shadow, especially because the hat is extending probably a bit forward. Uh, if it was right against, the closer an object is to whatever the shadow would be blocking, the closer the shadow will stay to the object. But the further away it is, right, so this is going to be pushing off, the, the deeper that shadow will be. So as it connects back towards the forehead, we'll lessen that shadow out, right? You can see we're pushing that in as it would be closer to the head. Still a little bit there. Um, and then we're going to have a little bit of that, that eyebrow, which I haven't quite decided if I'm going to do those in white since I've turned it into a tuxedo cat or um, if I'll leave them just sort of blank. Right, so we have this whole backside 
of course we have um, the eyelid on both sides that's in shadow so that's that light pin pressure um, and then you know you have the whole backside here in shadow maybe a little bit here just changing some of this angle as the some of this will change as we add um, highlights, giving myself enough room to work. And then the top of the eye, you know, where the eye is going down into the eye, <laughs> where the eyelid is going down into the eye, that would be in shadow as well. So I'm going to get the rest of the shadows filled in, right? It's just along this back side, finishing on this side, and I will be right back. Now we're going to add in the full pin pressure, right? Um, but as we're connecting in to areas we've already done shadow, what we're really going to do is add more lines. Um, and that'll allow us to blend it better. And then as we get further away, we'll transition from more lines to just more pin pressure. Right. So up in here, right, we'll just add more lines in. That'll do the same thing that more pin pressure will do, but it'll allow it to blend. And then as we start to, to you know, get further away, we can transition that because the, the full pin pressure um, is a little bit too harsh. Um, it's uh, the line is thicker. And so we don't necessarily want a thicker line when we're trying to blend it. So that's why we'll, we'll just add more lines. Right, so tricky around all of the little like wrinkles we have in the face, but certainly still very doable. And then once again, you know, careful by the eye, even with this full pin pressure, making sure that's a nice straight or at least clean line. Being careful to blend it. And so I'm going to finish getting the rest of this purple in a highlight. And I will be right back. How it's looking so far. I'll know more to know what adjustments I need to make once we add the white in. So I'm going to go ahead and get that done. All right, so the edge of the mouth here, just like we did with the purple, you know, this is in shadow. I'm going to change a little bit of this angle, so I'm going to bring this down change its angle a little I'm going to do the same thing on the other side bring that down to change the angle and then you know on that back side of that of the mouth you would have some shadowing just like underneath as well And then of course we have um, the wrinkles here, just like we did over here. Okay. So right, these little spots. Okay, so I'm gonna get, I'm gonna do both, well, Usually I do one cheek, the one furthest away from the from the light source, all in shadow before I add in the highlights. I do the same with the chin. Um, 
I go ahead and get this in though. So this obviously highlight. And then same thing with this that we did with the purple and that as I get close to some areas that have um, shadowing, I'm backing off my pin pressure and just adding in more lines to brighten it up. So that nice big full pin pressure, if we need to, we can blend it better than it currently is. The, and I mean by that I mean the white into the purple. Right. All the way to the nose. And some in between with the wrinkles. So I'm actually going to go ahead and fill in the rest of this in shadow, and I'll be right back. Obviously this is full highlight, right? But that'll push into the edge, right? So we're backing that off. So the edge will be in shadow. So I'm just adding more lines to brighten it up. And then as we come over to this side, this edge will also be in shadow on the mouth on the left, because that's the side that's dipping away from the light source. All right, so we have this morning here I did a layer for whiskers and I just, oh, I guess I attached it to the hat. That's fine. I'm gonna get rid of the whiskers, but we'll be adding them in when I draw it, but not in purple. Right, so now we can blend it if we want to, right? Because I can pull this up and do other things with it, just like we can here as well. It doesn't have to stay perfectly in line easier to do this with a brighter color on a darker one so the white on the purple helps blend and you can you know lighten up the edge and just sort of have it blended over into that section same over here you can use the white to help mimic the little grin okay and on this side, you know, nose isn't big enough to block the light, so a lot of this would also be in highlight. And again, you know, you have that middle section that actually is, well, it dips down on one side, it pulls out on the other, so. Right underneath certainly is in shadow. But this would come all the way around and connect back in with the top for highlight, and then not going all the way to the edge. And then it's just a matter of kind of blending it all in from there, making sure it all looks right, brightening up what needs to be brightened up. Right, and then we have the bottom. I'm going to add highlighting, of course, on the left where that light source is. And again, it's just more lines, not more pin pressure. And then a bit until we start rounding around and I start backing off how many lines we're doing, right? So that kind of has this nice flow over. Yeah, looking good so far. Now, before we get to the nose, 
going to add a little bit of teeth in here. Not much. Just a couple of like little canines coming down. And then other teeth. <laughs> mm, don't know that I like that. I think I like the canines though. To make them a bit smaller. Barely visible. Barely visible. And then we'll take out this little guy. Yeah. Okay. So gonna do a little bit of like pinkish in the mouth. Nothing big. Just like it's there. And then maybe a little bit more of the teeth on the bottom. Yeah, it makes him look a little bit more smiley. Okay. Now back to the purple for the nose. Um, yeah, I don't know why I put that back on there. I don't need it. Uh, probably I'm gonna have to change this a bit. Right, so we have the nose. You're gonna have a, a dip down here, right? And the nose as it comes over one way and the other way. Okay, so I'm gonna brighten that up by having it on where the nostrils coming down. We're gonna back that pin pressure off. I'm gonna have this come down and back it off a little like middle section where um, there'd probably be a dip on one side, right? You'd probably have like a little notch in the nose. And then on this side, tapering that off. We have the little cat nose. <laughs> Pretty cute guy. The white really helps with the grin too. So that's good. Um, I might come back in here and do better on, on that squidgy here on the little lines on the on the white. I need to do the purple here, and I'm debating on white or purple for the I think I'm gonna do white for the whiskers since it's a tuxedo cat white might fit i'm just gonna see oh that's purple <laughs> i'm just gonna see um i guess let me do the ear first since i'm already on the purple so i'm gonna do this all in shadow first just like i would with any cat fluff um black cats or purple as is the case for this time um, instead of having white fluff in their ears, we'll often have like the dark black, right? So we'll do the fluff in purple. And then, right, light source coming from above and to the left. So I'm going to give that highlighting above and to the left. And twist it and change it and whatever it. Um, as I did the ear, something also to note, which you can probably tell as I left a gap here, is the ear would be disappearing um, into that fluff. Just going to make the fluff a little bit bigger to really showcase what it is and that it's not following the same pattern as the rest of that. Right, you can, you can clearly see that now. Okay. 
Now, the eyebrows. I don't know if I'm going to do in white or just leave it as black. I'm going to see what they look like as white. Ugh. I'm actually going to leave it as black. I think that looks better. What I am going to do, though, is go ahead and fix this. Make the lines on the nose a little clearer. So when I pull back, you get a clear sense that there's some wrinkles there. And then just brightening up that white. Now some white whiskers. Which is just drawing at the shoulder. Drawing at the shoulder and doing like a little swoop. Bunching them up and then whatever you do on one side you do on the other. Same thing, just drawing at the shoulder. That was a weird line. <laughs> drawing at the shoulder and allowing my hand to just kind of swoop down. Now, we have the eyes, which we'll do is green. Before I get to the eyes, I'm going to see about thinning out the little smile lines here. Nothing big, just enough that it takes I do that, I probably want to get rid of the white right next to it. Yeah, I guess it's the benefit of drawing in a cartoon style. I can leave some of it just black to highlight. I think that works better than having the white there. And certainly make sure he's got the grin. I think the teeth are also necessary. All right, now for the eyes. So, we, um, like usual, Usual, going to draw the pupil first, which is kind of already sketched in, so that's easy. And then just do the green all the way around um, on both. And then we'll take the um, uh, uh, the uh, elliptical marquee tool and straighten out the pupil. But the idea is that we We'll fill this all the way in. I'm gonna ditch my sketch. Fill this all the way in, all the way around, right? And go from there. So I'm gonna do that real fast, and I'll be right back. Now we're gonna take the electrical marquee tool. We're gonna get the eye right. So we're gonna pop that on there. I'm going to erase, and then inverse, take the drawing tool again, and right by the pupil, this is just to make the pupil nice and clean. Don't have to do this, but I like to do it. Um, and I'm creating almost a crosshatch around the eye, just to make sure all of the gaps are filled in. And then I'm going to deselect just to be sure. See, it's not down here. There's another gap. Okay. So then we're going to select inverse again, reselect the elliptical key tool, drag the selection over here, once again align it, erase, and then select inverse and do the same thing. So just that coming in at those angles.
and then we'll check it before we ditch it completely. Yeah, not done. Yeah. Okay, now we're gonna fill it in. So, um, light source coming from above and to the left. So the opposite side of the light source against the pupil gonna have this strong, strong highlight. And that's on both eyes. Kind of like if you have like a cup or something, right? The rim of the cup on the side of the light source will go dark because the light's dipping down and on the opposite side it'll pick up the light source because it's coming back out. Okay. And then we're going to start filling in, right? So side of the light source, nice bright. We're going to follow the edge of the eye down to create the shadow. So there'll be a harsh shadow on right up by the pupil. Right, so we're going to come up here. This will be in shadow. So we're going to back off our pin pressure here. It's going to be bright all the way underneath, though. Right, so we're going to connect that in. And then this is going to follow that kind of line down. That the eyes doing and then the edge will also be in shadow and then we just follow the lines we just did it doesn't have to be perfect of course this back side will also go into shadow but not leaving our little like burst of light over here lingering by itself I'm gonna fade that out this side will need to be brighter than the top and then of course this edge will be in shadow but the rest of this is highlight well, not the rest of it. <laughs> to the side and underneath, highlight. We don't want them to look surprised, so we need to make sure that the... That's why we have to make sure that there's a nice strong shadow up top. Otherwise, he will look surprised. Which should be bad. Right, so shadow fading off, and then lighter pin pressure over here as we fill this in. But again, it's still going to be brighter than up top, so there's a lot of wiggle room here to filter this in. And just like before, we follow that edge of the eye down. It starts up high and then follow it down. Fading it off at the edge and then blending that together. Right, so this nice and bright and blending this over here. And then up top, much more faded. So we'll need to do a little bit of blending here from the extreme highlight into the more extreme shadow. But otherwise, oh, get overzealous with my pin pressure. Otherwise we'll fade that off. And so that's just a matter of, right, I'm not putting more pin pressure to, to blend it, I'm just adding some more lines. And then that very light pin pressure. All right, so when we pull back, yeah, it gets a nice, like, shadow and he doesn't look startled he just looks eager also helps with the eye shape because we we gave it a little tug on the corners right when we're smiling our eyes kind of become a little bit more squinty and they elongate at the corner so by like pulling this corner out and then adding a couple of these darker little wrinkles coming off it gives that illusion too so now the other side's a little tricky because now we want to balance it but luckily we have Luckily, unluckily, we have less space to work with for the highlight, right? So we have that highlight just like before, and we'd follow that down following the eye. So we fade it off as we get to the edge. Highlight that goes all the way underneath, connects in with our little burst of light, but, you know, 
is uh, faded against the pupil. And then what's, you know, that back side is going to be more in um, shadow, right? So this is that shadowed side. Once again, though, it'll be brighter than the top. But following that eye, the curvature of this for this as much as we can. Some potential adjustments, but as much as we can. And then making that a bit brighter. So I'm going to finish this eye, including like filling in this very lightly up top, and I'll be right back. Now, just balancing out or fixing any weird things, so brightening this up just a bit to balance out what I'd already done. Yeah. And then fixing any, you know, if there's any weird gaps. Now we can um, add in some extra for green. I'd probably choose yellow. We can add in like some, some lines. I've done this before. Typically it'll be brighter than the green that we used, right? Because we want this to pop a little bit more. So like coming in here and doing an extra burst of green, I'm going to have to get closer. I was hoping to do it way out here, but no such luck. Extra burst of green, yellow, extra burst of yellow right against the pupil, if I can aim it right. Right. Doesn't have to fully fill up what the other one did. And then can do kind of this like jagged line, right? So all I'm really doing, right, if you come in, you can see it, right? It's just kind of this. Making sure I don't push into the people, I don't push outside of the eye, and I stick mostly to the highlight where there's shadow, I fade off the lines. So it can exist. And then whatever you do on one side, you do on the other. This adds a little bit more of that effect of um, like muscles in our eyes. Luckily, because of how I draw, that's already kind of there. But this adds a little bit more to it, right? So especially in areas where there's highlight, you can really fill it in, just sort of circling around where the pupil is. So I won't have it turned away from that. And then as it goes into shadow, just turning it into like single little lines. Right. And that can add a lot to the look of the eye. And then sort of the final thing for eyes is that light flare. I'm just going to change this to white. Once again, grab the elliptical maquis tool. And make a little circle in where the highlight of the eye is, so I wouldn't do it up in here in the in the dark. And then fill it with the foreground color, which we've already changed to that white, and drag it over and do the same thing on the other side, lining it up roughly in that same kind of spot. So you want it to push into the pupil just a little bit. Yeah, there we go. So there's the cat portion of the feline familiar. And then we have the hat for next time. All right, so that's part one of drawing a feline familiar or, you know, drawing a cat with the witch's hat to come next week. Um, there, in the floating nether next to me, there are other videos of art tutorials I've done. I will see you all soon. Thank you so much. Take care.